Hello everyone. In tonight's video I'm going to show you uh, one new technique on my channel, new technique for me. I've recently bought a book by Daryl Martin, Fly Tying Methods, and I found this technique over there. It's so far a very interesting book, but I cannot judge yet because I haven't read it completely. So I'm going to show you how to tie this interesting technique, those flies. Uh, I've tied a couple of them just to practice and because it's new for me as I said but I wanted to share it with you apart from that I really want to share how I do my dubbing uh, how I dub my bodies on my flies regular flies and this kind of flies I use the same method and I think it's very useful but uh, highly overlooked by many people first let's go into materials and after materials let's hop into tying so let's start with a hook, in this case it's the MCO 900BL in size 14. For thread it's Semperfly Nano Silk in 30 denier, dark green color but that's completely unimportant because I will probably color it in another color. For the dubbing I will use Antron and some Peacock dubbing in ice dubbing variation. So that's very simple as you can see, just a couple of materials and some heckle. For coloring thread there is permanent marker. So as announced I'm going to use 900BL in size 14 by Tiemco and for the thread I will use Semperfly, not Semperfly that I always say, in 18 denier, 18 zero or 30 denier. What you need to know is that it's super thin, it's super strong and the color of this thread is quite unimportant primarily because the color doesn't show when you see one layer of the thread uh, when you do a couple of layers yes you can see the color basically but uh, GSPs they don't they don't get color dyeing so well as some other materials so I laid f a foundation of thread all over my hook body because friction that's created between two thread layers as opposed to between thread layer and hook is greater because thread creates more friction obviously. Uh, so for the rear segment I will use uh, Ice Dub Prism and it's peacock color and as you can see I've cut out the corner of the bag I've seen that in I think one of those Cali Gallops videos I think it's quite a useful thing you don't need to open your bag all the time and since it's not natural material uh, I'm not afraid of any bugs coming into my bag uh, so I'll just dub a section of the body and uh, a section of the thread sorry and you need some experience to decide how much you need but basically what you need to do is you need to take as little dubbing as possible and uh, put it in layers so put it in segments down the thread and then all the cover that uh, foundation cover it with another layer and another layer and as much as you need I spin it in clockwise direction as you can see here so always when you dub, um, always dub in the same direction, don't do this, don't rub it. So always dub in the same direction. It's very important that uh, fibers of your dubbing are fully around the thread because that's, that is what will ensure uh, that your dubbing stays safe on the thread. So I'm going to cover some around five six centimeters of the thread in length and i'm trying to make a fairly uniform thickness of the noodle so now i'm um, laminating this uh, meaning that i'm applying new layer of dubbing and then a new layer of dubbing and new layer of dubbing uh, since I've mentioned Kelly Gallup, in, he has a nice method of deciding whether he has too much or of dubbing, because too much is wrong, too little is not wrong. Um, he just uh, takes a little pinch of dubbing and lets it in the air, and if it floats in the air, if it doesn't go down, 
uh, immediately, then it's good. It, it's good. So if it levitates in the air in front of you, then you have just enough dubbing for your needs. So what I will do in this case is I will create a little bit thicker noodle in the middle and a little bit thinner towards the ends. So both ends are going to be thinner while the middle will be uh, thicker. Because I want to compress this dubbing noodle, I want to compress it like this. So I'm gonna wet my fingers so this dubbing stays better around this noodle. It takes some time and some dubbings definitely work better than others. I wouldn't be using seals fur for this application ever. While Antron or Superfine dubbing are going to be perfect. I guess beaver dubbing would work, I've never tried. Now what you need to do is to take something that's thin and that's tapering towards the end. So either your dubbing needle or with finishing tool, whatever. And you need to place it as if you were uh, making a dubbing loop. So I'm gonna show you here. So I'm gonna fold around, fold around the, the, the dubbing needle, my thread, and go just one round around the hook shank. I'll pull the dubbing upwards and then pull my bobbin holder downwards. And when I reach the bottom here, I'll just pull out the I'll pull out the, the, the dubbing needle and I'll squeeze with my index finger and my thumb, I'll squeeze the, this dubbing ball as much as I can, I'll pull thread downwards. Then I'll take a couple of locking turns around the hook shank. It doesn't look like much now as you can see. It even spins around the hook shank. What I do now, I go around it a little bit and after a wrap I just pull on my thread to make it secured. Now another locking wraps, check my noodle. If I'm not satisfied I'm gonna do a couple of more eight wraps. And this is very easy way to shape up your ball here. Now I'm gonna try to show you towards you so I'm gonna do crisscrossing wraps and if I do this it means that I'm going to lock this and prevent it from spinning so a couple of crisscross and then just do a couple of locking wraps now if you're doing locking wraps one on the top of another you're not doing much better do one next to another because the friction is going to be greater. And then one, two, and then finish off. And this should be pretty good, yeah. This is solid. So we have one pretty sturdy uh, dubbing ball over here, and obviously that's going to be the case with another ball over here, which I'm going to place roughly around here. So you need to plan. Uh, I think this type of uh, baits would work better on the curved hook because the flat part of the shank is shorter so you can place those two balls closer to one to another but then again uh, placing the hackle is going to be a little bit difficult so what you want to do is to cover the thread uh, cover the hook with thread here I just flatten the thread here repeat the process again for just for the purpose of this video I'm gonna use um, black dubbing. I think black contrasts very well on most surfaces uh, so it's going to be almost like an indicator so instead of using some fluo pink or whatever I'm going to use black antron and I'm hoping it's going to be quite visible. Now I'm doing the same thing here I'm taking a little by little of antron placing it along the thread and then just going along the thread, I'm going to do to do dub it around the thread. Now you can use a little less clump of dubbing, or you can use the same amount and create almost the same size of the segment, front segment. 
so this is too much. Okay, I'm gonna do tapering towards the ends. Now, as I've said uh, while I was doing this rear end, uh, I'm doing those this laminating thing primarily because I want to make this pretty sturdy and teeth resistant uh, fly. So how much dubbing do you need? It's just a feeling. Uh, basically, uh, unless you're very experienced, which I'm not when it comes to these, this type of fly, uh, there is no way you can, you can say like, you need this much of dubbing. Now, I will use my uh, web finishing tool and thus I will do the same. As you can see, I'll do the compressing now. And now I'm doing it so you can see it better. Okay. I'll just pull out. And then again, with your index finger and your thumb, you are controlling where you're going to place this. So if I want to place it on the top, I'll just pull from down up like so and pull down my thread. So I'm pulling up with my left hand and I'm cinching down with the thread. Okay. Now I'll repeat the process here. So let's do it again. I'm gonna do it. One, two, so three. And I'll just go a little bit around. And this is going to be a little bit like a hackle base here. So I'm just, I'm not creating like a parachute post base, but just a little uh, let's say indent so I can place my hackle where I want it. Now I want to do a figure of eight again. And let me check the dubbing ball. Yep, quite good. Now I have two nice, relatively even dubbing balls. And one thing I failed to, to, to tell you is that you can saturate these two dubbing balls with some floatant liquid one, obviously. And when it comes into it, uh, the water will be, it will be more difficult for water to penetrate. Uh, although this one is uh, not going to soak any water, this one as well. Uh, so I'm using uh, synthetic materials that are like not water absorbent, uh, which will help in buoyancy of this fly. Uh, now I need to just find a hackle and uh, finish up the fly. So I'm going to use Grizzly. I think Grizzly is probably one of the best colors when it comes to hackle. One of the most useful colors. And as you can see, like I like a little bit oversized hackle uh, because it just helps when it comes to buoyancy. Now I'm gonna, no, I'm not gonna use this front part of the rachis here, of the feather. I'm going to use last maybe two thirds of the feather because I'm going to avoid the webby part that's in, in the middle of the barbs. And more importantly, I'm going to avoid the oval shape, almost round shape of the rachis that's near the quill. Uh, as you go up the rachis towards the tip of the, of the feather, the rachis becomes more square shaped. So it tends to lay more predictably. Now let me just remove some barbs and now uh, because I'm not going to uh, wrap this hackle conventional way I want to attach my barb from the far side here so I'm gonna rotate the vise and this is perfect opportunity to color the thread. Luckily this thread doesn't get those dyes very well when it comes to industrial things, but when it comes to permanent marker, it's amazing what the Sharpie can do to it. Now, I'm gonna place it along the hook. Let me try. Okay, so I'm gonna counter spin the bobbin here, counter spin the thread, catch the rachis, and with touching turns, I'm going to secure it, secure it, and I'll go behind, 
Okay, now the reason why I did this is because my thread is going this way. So I'm clockwise around the hook if you look from the front. So I want to use uh, anti-clockwise if I look from above the the heckle if I'm on the heckle like this because when I finish up the heckle the thread and the heckle will finish the same direction so the th the thread will actually tighten a little bit more this heckle so let me just go and catch a couple of wraps over here and this is it now I'll wet my fingers again. I want to pull those barbs backwards. This is not my preferred method of doing a uh, parachute because I like to do it around the base. So I just made two loose wraps and I'll just now cinch it a little bit better. It's a little bit tight over here, but then again, it's worth it. Now, let me do those locking wraps. I need to do it a little bit more with GSP because it's slippery. Now I'll push my scissors into the rakes. That's good. Now, obviously you're not going to get the fly that looks perfect uh, for Instagram and stuff like that, but you're going to get fly that will definitely catch some fish so I'll go with my flattened thread towards the back here and here I'm gonna whip finish the fly again with flattened thread I want to flatten it because flat thread will create nicer and more secure whip finish and I have some stray fiber stray barbs over here but that's not a big concern now I'm just gonna pull those hackles hackle barbs up and that's it you're going to get low laying uh, bug and whatever you want to call it it's definitely some buggy looking fly uh, what I was doing to you when I was using it, uh, I wasn't even using any floatant. It floats just as good without any floatants. But if you want, as I said, just take some liquid floatant, saturate it to do a couple of false casts to remove the excess. Uh, excess floatant and that's it so guys if you like this video please give it a like subscribe and comment down below because i really enjoy reading your comments i learn sometimes from them sometimes i help you maybe uh, clarify something that i didn't explain well in the video so please comment and see you next week